The historiography of early Islam refers to the study of the early history of Islam during the 7th century. From Muhammad's first revelations in AD 610 until the disintegration of the Rashidun Caliphate in AD 661, and arguably throughout the 8th century and the duration of the Umayyad Caliphate, terminating in the incipient Islamic Golden Age around the beginning of the 9th century. <laughs> Primary sources 7th century Islamic sources 692 Quranic mosaic on the Dome of the Rock the Book of Sulaym ibn Qays, attributed to Sulaym ibn Qays, death 694 to 714. The work is an early Shia hadith collection, and it is often recognized as the earliest such collection. There is a manuscript of the work dating to the 10th century. Some Shia scholars are dubious about the authenticity of some features of the book, and Western scholars are almost unanimously skeptical concerning the work, with most placing its initial composition in the 8th or 9th century. The work is generally considered pseudepigraphic by modern scholars. Topic: 7th century non-Islamic sources. There are numerous early references to Islam in non-Islamic sources. Many have been collected in historiographer Robert G. Hoyland's compilation Seeing Islam as Others Saw It. One of the first books to analyze these works was Hagarism authored by Michael Cook and Patricia Crone. Hagarism contends that looking at the early non-Islamic sources provides a much different picture of early Islamic history than the later Islamic sources do some of the sources provide an account of early Islam which significantly contradicts the traditional Islamic accounts of two centuries later. The date of composition of some of the early non-Islamic sources is controversial. In 1991, Patricia Crone and Michael Cook disavowed a portion of the views that they presented in this book. 634 Doctrina Iacobi 636 Fragment on the Arab Conquests 639 Sophronius, Patriarch of Jerusalem 640 Thomas the Presbyter 640 Homily on the Child Saints of Babylon 643. The 25th of April per 558 644 Coptic Apocalypse of pseudo Shenut. 648 Life of Gabriel of Cartman 650 Fredegar 655 Pope Martin I 659 Ishoyab III of Adiabene 660 Sabaos, Bishop of the Bagratunis 660 A Chronicler of Khuzestan 662 Maximus the Confessor 665 Benjamin I 670 Arkulf, a pilgrim 676 The Synod of 676 680 George of Rishina 680 The Secrets of Rabbi Simon ben Yohai 680 Bundahishkin 681 Trophies of Damascus 687 Athanasius of Ballad, Patriarch of Antioch 687 John Bar Penke 690 Syriac Apocalypse of Pseudo Methodius, 692 Syriac Apocalypse of Pseudo Ephraim, 694 John of Nikiu, 697 Anti Jewish Polemicists. Epigraphy Analysis of a sandstone inscription found in 2008 determined that it reads. In the name of Allah, I, Zuhair, wrote this at the time Umar died per year 4, and 20. It is worthwhile pointing out that Caliph Umar bin al-Khattab died on the last night of the month of Dhul Hijjah of the year 23 AH, and was buried next day on the first day of Muharram of the new year 24 AH, corresponding to 644 CE. Thus the date mentioned in the inscription above conforms to the established and known date of the death of Umar bin al-Khattab. Traditional Muslim historiography Topic. Science of biography, science of hadith, and isnad Muslim historical traditions first began developing from the earlier 7th century with the reconstruction of Muhammad's life following his death. 
Because narratives regarding Muhammad and his companions came from various sources, it was necessary to verify which sources were more reliable. In order to evaluate these sources, various methodologies were developed, such as the science of biography, science of hadith, and isnad chain of transmission. These methodologies were later applied to other historical figures in the Muslim world. Ilm ar rijal Arabic is the science of biography, especially as practiced in Islam, where it was first applied to the sirah, the life of the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, and then the lives of the four rightly guided caliphs who expanded Islamic dominance rapidly. Since validating the sayings of Muhammad is a major study, isnad. Accurate biography has always been of great interest to Muslim biographers, who accordingly attempted to sort out facts from accusations, bias from evidence, etc. The earliest surviving Islamic biography is Ibn Ishaq's Surat Rasul Allah, written in the 8th century, but known to us only from later quotes and recensions 9th -10th century. The science of hadith is the process that Muslim scholars use to evaluate hadith. The classification of hadith into sahih sound, hasan good, and daif weak was firmly established by Ali ibn al-Madini Later, al-Madini's student Muhammad al-Bukhari authored a collection that he believed contained only sahih hadith, which is now known as the Sahih Bukhari. Al-Bukhari's historical methods of testing hadiths and isnads is seen as the beginning of the method of citation and a precursor to the scientific method which was developed by later Muslim scientists. I. A. Ahmad writes, The vagueness of ancient historians about their sources stands in stark contrast to the insistence that scholars such as Bukhari and Muslim manifested in knowing every member in a chain of transmission and examining their reliability. They published their findings, which were then subjected to additional scrutiny by future scholars for consistency with each other and the Quran. Other famous Muslim historians who studied the science of biography or science of hadith included Urwa ibn Zubair, died 712; Wahb ibn Munabi, died 728; Ibn Ishaq, died 761; Al Waqidi, 745 to 822; Ibn Hisham, died 834; Al Makrizi, 1364 to 1442; and Ibn Hajar Asqalani, 1372 to 1449, among others. Topic. Historiography, cultural history, and philosophy of history The first detailed studies on the subject of historiography itself and the first critiques on historical methods appeared in the works of the Arab Muslim historian and historiographer Ibn Khaldun who is regarded as the father of historiography, cultural history, and the philosophy of history, especially for his historiographical writings in the Muqaddimah Latinized as Prolegomena and Kitab al-Ibar Book of Advice. His Muqaddimah also laid the groundwork for the observation of the role of state, communication, propaganda and systematic bias in history, and he discussed the rise and fall of civilizations. Franz Rosenthal wrote in The History of Muslim Historiography, Muslim historiography has at all times been united by the closest ties with the general development of scholarship in Islam, and the position of historical knowledge in Muslim education has exercised a decisive influence upon the intellectual level of historici writing. The Muslims achieved a definite advance beyond previous historical writing in the sociology. In the Muqaddimah, Ibn Khaldun warned of seven mistakes that he thought that historians regularly committed. In this criticism, he approached the past as strange and in need of interpretation. The originality of Ibn Khaldun was to claim that the cultural difference of another age must govern the evaluation of relevant historical material, to distinguish the principles according to which it might be possible to attempt the evaluation, and lastly, to feel the need for experience, in addition to rational principles, in order to assess a culture of the past. Ibn Khaldun often criticized idle superstition and uncritical acceptance of historical data." As a result, he introduced a scientific method to the study of history, which was considered something new to his age, and he often referred to it as his new science, now associated with historiography. His historical method also laid the groundwork for the observation of the role of state, communication, propaganda and systematic bias in history, and he is thus considered to be the father of historiography or the 
father of the philosophy of history. Topic: <inaudible> World History. Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari (838–923) is known for writing a detailed and comprehensive chronicle of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern history in his History of the Prophets and Kings in 915. Abu al-Hasan Ali al (896–956), known as the Herodotus of the Arabs, was the first to combine history and scientific geography in a large-scale work, Maruj Adh Dahab wa Ma'idan al-Jawahir The Meadows of Gold and Mines of Gems, a book on world history. Until the 10th century, history most often meant political and military history, but this was not so with Persian historian Biruni in his Kitab Fi Taqiq Ma Lil Hind researches on India, he did not record political and military history in any detail, but wrote more on India's cultural, scientific, social and religious history. Along with his researches on India, Biruni discussed more on his idea of history in his chronological work The Chronology of the Ancient Nations. Topic. Famous Muslim historians Urwa ibn Zubair died 712. Hadith of Umar's speech of forbidding Mutah. Ibn Shihab al zuri died 742. Hadith of Umar's speech of forbidding Mutah. Hadith of prohibition of Mutah at Kabar. Ibn Ishaq died 761. Surah Rasul Allah. Imam Malik died 796. Al Mawada. Al Waqidi, seven hundred forty five to eight hundred twenty two Book of History and Campaigns Ali ibn al Madini, seven hundred seventy seven to eight hundred fifty The Book of Knowledge about the Companions Ibn Hisham, died eight hundred thirty four Surah Rasul Allah Dual Nun al Misri, died eight hundred fifty nine Muhammad al Bukhari, eight hundred ten to eight hundred seventy Sahih Bukhari Muslim B. Al Hajjaj died 875. Sahih Muslim Ibn Majah died 886. Sunan Ibn Majah Abu Daud died 888. Sunan Abi Daud Al Tirmidhi died 892. Sunan Al Tirmidhi Abu Al Hasan Ali Al Masudi 896 to 956. Maruj Adh Dahab wa Ma'idan al Jawahir, The Meadows of Gold and Mines of Gems, 947. Ibn Washia, c. 904. Nabatin Agriculture. Kitab Shak al Mustaham. Al Nasay, died 915. Sunan al Sugra. Muhammad ibn Jarir al Tabari, 838 to 923. History of the Prophets and Kings. Tafsir al Tabari al Baladari died 892. Kitab Fuda al Buldan. Genealogies of the Nobles. Hakim al Nishabori died 1014. Al Mustadrik Allah al Sahian. Abu Rayhan al Biruni 973 Indica. History of Mahmud of Ghazni and his father. History of Kawarism. Abd al Latif al Baghdadi, 13th century. Ibn Abi Zar, died 1310-1320. Rad al Kurdas, al Dahabi, 1274-1348. Major history of Islam. Takis al Mustadrik. Tadkarat al Hufiz. Al Kamal fi ma backquote Rifat al Rijal. Ibn Kathir, 1300-1373. Al Bidaya wa n Nihaya, Al Sira al Nabawiya, Ibn Khaldun, thirteen thirty two to fourteen o six, Mukadima, thirteen seventy seven, Kitab al Ibar, Ibn Hajar al Askalani, thirteen seventy two to fourteen forty nine, Fath al Bari, Tadib al Tadib, Finding the Truth in Judging the Company Nans, Bulak al Maram. Topic. Modern academic scholarship Topic. The beginnings 
The earliest academic scholarship on Islam arose in Western countries and tended to involve Christian and Jewish translators and commentators. They translated the readily available Sunni texts from Arabic into European languages including German, Italian, French, and English, then summarized and commented in a fashion that was often hostile to Islam. Notable Christian scholars included William Muir (1819–1905), Reinhard Dozy (1822–1883), Die Israeliten zu Mecca (1864), David Samuel Margoliath (1858–1940), William Saint Clair Tisdall (1859–1928), Leone Catani (1869–1935). Alphonse Mingana (1878–1937). All these scholars worked in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Another pioneer of Islamic studies, Abraham Geiger (1810–1874), a prominent Jewish rabbi, approached Islam from that standpoint in his "Was Hat Muhammad aus dem Judentum Agenemann? What did Muhammad borrow from Judaism? 1833. Geiger's themes continued in Rabbi Abraham I. Katz's. Judaism and the Quran 1962 Topic <inaudible> Establishment of academic research Other scholars notably those in the German tradition took a more neutral view the 19th century scholar Julius Wellhausen 1844 to 1918 offers a prime example they also started cautiously to question the truth of the arabic texts they took a source-critical approach, trying to sort the Islamic texts into elements to be accepted as historically true, and elements to be discarded as polemic or as pious fiction. Such scholars included Michael Jan de Goje (1836–1909), Theodor Noldic (1836–1930), Ignaz Goldziher (1850–1921), Henri Lamens (1862–1937). Arthur Jeffery (1892–1959), H. A. R. Gibb (1895–1971), Joseph Schacht (1902–1969), Montgomery Watt (1909–2006). Topic: The Revisionist Challenge. In the 1970s the Revisionist School of Islamic Studies, or what has been described as a wave of skeptical scholars, Donner 1998p. 23, challenged a great deal of the received wisdom in Islamic studies. They argued that the Islamic historical tradition had been greatly corrupted in transmission. They tried to correct or reconstruct the early history of Islam from other, presumably more reliable, sources, such as coins, inscriptions, and non-Islamic sources. The oldest of this group was John Wansbrough, 1928 to 2002. Wansbrough's works were widely noted, but perhaps not widely read. Donner, 1998, says Wansbrough's awkward prose style, diffuse organization, and tendency to rely on suggestive implication rather than tight argument, qualities not found in his other published works, have elicited exasperated comment from many reviewers. Donner 1998p38. Wansbrough's skepticism influenced a number of younger scholars, including Martin Hines, 1941 to 1988; Patricia Crone, 1945 to 2015. Michael Cook 1940 in 1977 Crone and Cook published Hagarism, The Making of the Islamic World, which argued that the traditional early history of Islam is a myth, generated after the Arab conquests of Egypt, Syria, and Persia to prop up the new Arab regimes in those lands and to give them a solid ideological foundation. Hagarism suggests that the Quran was composed later, rather than early, and that the Arab conquests may have been the cause, rather than the consequence, of Islam. The main evidence adduced for this thesis consisted of contemporary non-Muslim sources recording many early Islamic events. If such events could not be supported by outside evidence, then according to Crone and Cook, they should be dismissed as myth. Crone and Cook's more recent work has involved intense scrutiny of early Islamic sources, but not their total rejection. See, for instance, Crone's 1987 publications, Roman, Provincial, and Islamic Law and Meccan trade and the rise of Islam 
both of which assume the standard outline of early Islamic history while questioning certain aspects of it, also Cook's 2001 Commanding Right and Forbidding Wrong in Islamic Thought, which also cites early Islamic sources as authoritative. In 1972 construction workers discovered a cache of ancient Qurans, commonly known as the Sana'a manuscripts, in a mosque in Sana'a, Yemen. The German scholar Gerd R. Puen has been investigating these Quran fragments for years. His research team made 35,000 microfilm photographs of the manuscripts, which he dated to the early part of the 8th century. Puen has not published the entirety of his work, but has noted unconventional verse orderings, minor textual variations, and rare styles of orthography. He has also suggested that some of the parchments were palimpsests which had been reused. Puen believed that this implied an evolving text as opposed to a fixed one. Karl Heinz Oleg has also researched Christian, Jewish roots of the Quran and its related texts. He sees the name Muhammad itself, the Blessed, as in Benedictus Key Venet, as part of that tradition. Contemporary scholars have begun to turn to the study of the Islamic sources in a skeptical mood. They tend to use the histories rather than the hadith, and to analyze the histories in terms of the tribal and political affiliations of the narrators if that can be established, thus making it easier to guess in which direction the material might have been slanted. Notable scholars include Fred M. Donner Wilford Madeling Gerald Hodding Jonathan Berkey Andrew Rippon Scholars combining traditional and academic scholarship A few scholars have managed to bridge the divide between Islamic and Western-style secular scholarship. They have completed both Islamic and Western academic training. Sherman Jackson Fazlur Rahman Suleiman Bashir See also Timeline of Early Islamic History Timeline of 7th Century Muslim History Timeline of 8th Century Muslim History List of Biographies of Muhammad Islamic Conquests References Bibliography <references> 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 Charles, Robert H. 2007, 1916. The Chronicle of John, Bishop of Nakiu, translated from Zotenberg's Ethiopic text. Merchantville, N.J., Evolution Publishing. Donner, Fred. 1998. Narratives of Islamic Origins, The Beginnings of Islamic Historical Writing. Darwin Press. ISBN 978-0878501274. Seeing Islam as Others Saw It, A Survey and Evaluation of Christian, Jewish and Zoroastrian Writings on Early Islam. Darwin Press. ISBN 978-0878501250. Madeling, Wilford The Succession to Muhammad, A Study of the Early Caliphate. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-64696-0. Vansina, Jan Oral Tradition as History. University of Wisconsin Press. ISBN 978-0299102142. External links An Islamic view of the development of the academic study of Islam Muslim historiography An article by online Britannica Islamic awareness dated and datable texts mentioning Prophet Muhammad from 1 to 100 AH, 622 to 719 CE.